Space Zoom, The Final Frontier. This is the review of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, an ultra premium class flagship whose job is to boldly go home with those who feel it is worth the price tag. Its mission, to help you explore your world in style with a feature set which complements your craven thirst for living it up without holding you back. My job? To tell you if it really can do all of that. We begin this top phone review at the top of the world. So we begin this review by testing out the main feature that Samsung has touted in its marketing, the 100X Space Zoom. And right here in the mountains high above the San Fernando Valley, this is as close as I could get to space to show you the Space Zoom. I'm gonna mount this phone onto a tripod because anytime you go for an extreme zoom, the zoom actually amplifies how shaky your hands are, which is one of the reasons why you have optical image stabilization or video image stabilization. So we're gonna mount that, I'm gonna take some photos and we're going to come back to those a little later in the review. is the Cosmic Gray edition of the S20 5G lineup. It also comes in cloud pink and cloud blue. You get a beautiful 6.9 inch Quad HD Dynamic AMOLED 2X Infinity O display that is HDR10 certified and sports up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. Along with that display, you get a 40 megapixel front facing center hole punch camera, which will definitely take solid selfies. And unlike some other front facing cameras, the ease of use is always great as you can just hold up your fist to take timed selfies. The right side of the phone is where you'll find the volume rocker and power button, nothing on the left. The bottom of the phone is where you'll find a USB-C port, one half of the stereo speakers, and a microphone. Top of the phone is where you'll find the SIM tray, which also holds expandable storage, along with another microphone. And right under that SIM tray and that microphone is a stereo speaker, the second half of the stereo speakers. This one handles higher end and treble. And unlike the previous reviews where I've said that they were imperceptible, this one actually just looks like it isn't even there. I've looked for it, I can't see it. It truly is the definition of imperceptible, but when you muffle the bottom speaker, you can definitely hear sound coming out of that top area of the phone. Now, before we get around to the backside, I'm gonna say something I don't often say. This phone is heavy, but in a good way. It feels extremely solid and well-built and comes with an IP68 rating for dust and water ingress. It definitely feels like a phone you'll be able to hold on to for quite some time. You know, the other heavy thing on the S20 Ultra is that camera bump. It's substantial. You're going to get depth vision cameras, but you'll also get a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 108 megapixel wide angle camera, then a 48 megapixel telephoto camera. Below those cameras, you're gonna get a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which I found kept me going through five hours screen time with roughly 15% left at the end of a day from around 4.30 a.m. to about 9 p.m. The battery supports both wired charging that is quick charge 2.0 compatible and fast wireless charging 2.0, which means that you'll need a wireless charging pad which supports 10 watts or better wireless charging. Unlike the Mophie wireless desk pad that I use, which I put the Ultra on for a couple nights, not having read the wireless charging spec and realized that seven and a half watt pad wasn't charging the phone. Then I placed the phone on a 30 watt wireless charger that OnePlus sent along with their OnePlus 8 Pro and the phone charged wirelessly like it should. And that's the hardware, but what about the experience? I have to say that this phone is my cup of tea for the most part. 
I see the Ultra as something very similar to the Note, but without the S Pen. It is the top of the line, and unlike how I described the Note 10 in a previous review as the Boxster in the Porsche lineup, the Ultra is definitely the 911 Turbo S. Where the 10 was Coach, the Ultra is definitely Hermes. On a personal level, there are little touches to the physical design, which I rather enjoyed. The flatter Infinity O display, which meant less accidental touches, loved it. The aluminum band around the device and the lines it takes around the rocker and power buttons, me being an anime head, it's kind of reminiscent of Gundam design, just kind of the angles and lines and back when I used to put those together and use ink pens to do the outline. The device's thickness, it is beefy. And that screen, oh, it is big and it is beautiful. Watching HDR content on Netflix is engrossing. I've always said that HDR is more important than 4K and watching The Witcher or Our Planet Coastal Seas just exemplifies that. These are 1080p, not 4K. In episode four of The Witcher, there is a banquet hall scene where the wolf colored eyes of The Witcher stand out using this HDR. In addition, there's a gentleman sitting at a table whose turquoise cape really pops and the princess jewels do as well. It just looks magnificent all the way around. And from coastal seas, this moment at nine minutes and 30 seconds in feels like you're actually underwater riding that turtle's back. This is immersive content on mobile like it should be. I've watched the same turtle clip on other smartphones and here on the Ultra with the screen resolution set to 2400 by 1080 and 120 hertz refresh rate turned on, I would actually watch the whole thing. For context, I'm all Clint Eastwood, get off my lawn when it comes to watching longer format programming or rather not watching longer format programming on mobile screens, but I'd be okay watching an episode or two of something like Witcher on the S20 Ultra. Speaking of what you can see, let's get back to those cameras. The images that 108 megapixel sensor produces are full of detail. As you can see here in this image I took of my fur baby, the texture of the carpet, the separation of the color gradient of her fur, the individual hairs themselves when you blow the image up, and the sharpness of the background where you see the fin slats. The dynamic range, it is all there. The interesting thing for me is that I found it better to take photos with the 108 megapixel sensor and zoom in for the close up than using the built in telephoto lens. You can see the difference in quality here with this tennis ball. In the shot taken with the telephoto lens, the color is a bit washed and zooming in, you're going to lose sharpness. Here in the 108 megapixel photo, zooming in, you keep color, contrast, and image sharpness. But let's go back to where we began and talk about that space zoom. Obviously, that's a bit of a gimmick, me being above the San Fernando Valley, but in the S20 Ultra's defense, if you look at this photo, it's pretty doggone good. You can actually make out the cars down there on that street down there, which is actually several miles away. So from the top of these mountains, several miles down with 100x space zoom, you're actually able to make out some cars. You know, it's not something you're actually gonna post to Instagram, but that's pretty phenomenal considering when I was actually a little younger, that's pretty much how all the photos look that our cameras took on these camera phones. So that's a big deal. Now for the real world test, I'm going to test out how Space Zoom is actually really supposed to work. What it does is Space Zoom is supposed to make what is 100 yards away look like it is one yard away. So I'm going to stand one yard from this phone. My beautiful wife is going to take my picture at one yard away. And then I'm going to walk all the way down to the end of this parking lot, approximately 100 yards away or the length of a football field. And then she's going to take that picture again. So real world test. I walked all the way down there 100 yards. My wife uh, tried to take the picture of me. She said it was moving a lot. And it's basically because, like I said, up there on top of the mountains, 
when your extreme zoom into something, when you're extremely magnifying something, shakes, all of that gets magnified as well. So when she was trying to center the camera on me, she was having a hard time with that. So she wanted me to double check it. So she walked down there and I tried to center the camera on her. And let me just say, I have a whole new respect for anyone who goes through uh, Marine Corps sniper training. Shout out to uh, my old pastor at one of my churches who was actually a Marine Scout sniper and got to like one of the highest levels you could get to as a scout sniper. Uh, because at distance, it is actually very difficult uh, to uh, focus in. And when I say focus, I don't mean get the shot in focus, but I mean actually get uh, the camera to be where you want it to be on the subject. Now, this does come with the crosshairs, speaking of sniper rifles, this does come with the crosshairs so you can center up your subject at that distance. But is it something you're actually really gonna use? Not really. It's very cool. It's a fun gimmick, but it's not something that is actually going to be real practical for you probably in your day-to-day -day use. A quick note. This is, of course, a 5G phone, and where I live, I'm right on the edge of 5G service and have been testing a few phones on T-Mobile's Sub-6 Spectrum. Of the phones I've tested, the Ultra seems to be taking a bit of a harder hit to the battery than some of those other devices. In context, that battery is still awesome. That said, I don't know yet if that's directly an RF issue, but I'm testing the Ultra against other flagship competitors and will provide the results on my social channels when I have them. For reference, with all of these devices, I've kept them off my home Wi-Fi during my use since lockdown has had me working remote. And like I've said, I'm in a fringe coverage area, so the phones, their reception, and battery life have been abused as far as signal acquisition, connectivity, and speed are concerned. Even with that, again, battery life on the S20 Ultra has been solid. So let's bring this space zoom back down to earth. At the end of the day, phones like this are necessary but not a necessity. They show us what the best of bleeding edge, state-of-the-art mobile technology has to offer for better or for worse, for great execution or glitches and bugs. And honestly, I'm not disappointed. If you can afford it, this is an excellent daily driver. Everything from the speakers to the camera to the 5G, when it comes to this Ultra, All Might would be proud. In many of my reviews on entry-level and mid-range phones, I often question the huge disparity in pricing, but when you use a phone like the Ultra, uh, that difference becomes a little clearer. 60 hertz or 120 hertz, there's a big difference. 1080p display or 2K plus with HDR watching videos, there's a difference. Ultra isn't just a marketing term, there's definitely a difference. How big we can debate, but there'd be no debate if there was no real discernible difference. And that, my friends, whether you like it or not, says a lot. Hey, we don't take it lightly that you've taken the time and spent the time with us here at reviews.org. If there's anything that I didn't address that you wanna talk about, sound off in the comments below. If you haven't already and this video's helped, please hit that subscribe. And we have a ton of great content actually on the site at reviews.org. If you wanna figure out which cell plan is gonna go best with your S20 Ultra purchase, or if you wanna match a rate plan with any phone we've talked about here in any of these review videos, just hit up the site. Their research team is amazing. They've done all the footwork for you. You'll get some great information there. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Reviews.org here on YouTube and telling you to check out Reviews.org, our home base, the website. Thank you for watching.